In this video, we're going to discuss about the other uh, methods of arriving at uh, 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 an optimal capital structure. And uh, we've already seen the first two, which is uh, the minimizing of cost of capital and the minimizing of cost of capital plus maximizing the operating income approach. We are now going to focus our, our understanding on uh, the adjusted present value uh, approach where the optimal debt ratio maximizes the overall value of the firm. And we're also going to look at the sector approach where the optimal debt ratio is essentially the one which uh, reaches closer to the sector averages, right? So we will look at both of these one by one. Let's first look at the adjusted present value approach and uh, understand what does this mean? Now in the adjusted present value approach, the value of the firm uh, is nothing but the sum of the value of the firm without debt and the effect of debt on firm value, right? So there are two effects of debt on the firm value. In terms of benefits, the debt gives you a tax advantage, right? So it gives you a tax benefit. In terms of uh, problems or the negative effects or disadvantages, there is a bankruptcy cost that comes in right so technically the value of the firm let's say the firm has zero debt so effectively unlevered firm value which is assuming a firm has zero debt and if the firm takes debt then what comes because of the debt is the positive impact which is the tax benefits of debt and the negative impacts which is the expected bankruptcy cost from debt right now so the negative impacts have to be subtracted, the positive have to be added. And if we can arrive at this, that's going to be the firm value. And the optimal debt level is the one that will maximize the firm value, correct? So the level at which the firm value gets maximized is what is going to be the optimal debt level. So that's the broad construct of how we work here. Obviously, we will need to find what is the unlevered firm value what we get in the market is the levered firm value. We will need to identify what are the tax benefits of debt and we will need to calculate the expected bankruptcy cost. Remember bankruptcy cost is a function of both the direct costs and the indirect costs. So we have to look at both of these costs and try and arrive with a number and that's what is going to be a little bit tricky uh, part in terms of our discussion here. Right. So let's understand to solve this. The first thing we need is the unlevered value of the firm. Now you can either calculate it by valuing the firm using a cost of equity calculated with the unlevered beta. Right. So that's one uh, one way or we can remove the tax benefits and make adjustments for bankruptcy cost to arrive at the unlevered values from the market value. So effectively, the current market value is nothing but it includes all the benefits of debt. So we remove the tax benefits, correct? And we add the bankruptcy costs. That's nothing but we are changing this earlier equation. So to get to this, we take the firm value from the market. We, we take tax benefits minus expected bankruptcy on the other side of the equation correct and so we get this uh, equation where we get the current enterprise value and from there we remove uh, the tax benefits and bankruptcy cost then at every debt level we need to calculate the value of the tax benefit that comes to us correct what kind of benefits are due uh, because of the debt and we need to calculate the expected bankruptcy cost and not just the bankruptcy cost, there is also going to be a probability of bankruptcy. So the expected bankruptcy cost, remember the expected value is nothing but the probability into the outcome, right? So that's what we are going to get. We first need to find out what are the chances. Probability is nothing but the chances that a firm may go bankrupt what are the chances that a firm may go bankrupt? So we need to first find out this probability. 
and that's a difficult task so we will rely on estimates that have been given to us by other experts in the field and uh, then we have to look at what is the cost essentially at every level right so the probability of default while it is difficult to find the probability for any firm some studies have established the approximate chances of a firm defaulting given its rating so once we can find the bond rating of a firm the chances of it defaulting are given one such study is called the Altman study of bonds right so that's a famous study which basically tells us the probability of default given a rating right the table on the right estimates the default probabilities based on the bond rating of a firm Altman estimated these probabilities by looking at bonds in each rating class 10 years prior and then examining the proportion of these bonds that defaulted over 10 years right so how did he do that let's say he went ahead and looked at 100 triple b firms and then checked in the next 10 years about seven and a half percent or seven and a half firms had defaulted out of it based on that he created this table saying that for every particular rating you create a bucket of firms and then look at it after 10 years or within the next 10 years that come what are the chances of default that come up obviously as the rating decreases as the rating decreases the likelihood of default increases because your risk is increasing and as you see the rating goes below double B and B the numbers start increasing at a very very fast clip at D which is the last rating there's almost a hundred percent chance of default at C there is an 85 percent chance at double C there is 70 at double B there is about 16 and half at triple B there is about seven and half at A there is about 0.66 percent probability right so based on these probabilities now we know what are the chances a company will default we will also have to assume what is the expected firm value loss that comes because of default correct so let's try and calculate that for uh, for our uh, company and we're going to look at calculating unlevered firm value for our firm Apollo tires so the current enterprise value of the firm we can find what is the market capitalization of the company market value of equity we can find the debt value which we have already done and from this so market cap plus debt minus cash is what is the enterprise value and because debt value is kind of close to the to the uh, you know the book value of debt is the same as the market value of debt we try and keep that there but EV is essentially a market value estimate note there is a deviation from what we have done so far so far we had taken book value of equity now we are moving towards a market value of equity right so that's my current value this is in rupees million so 117029 million now the current debt level is this the tax benefit is 30 percent of that that's calculated here correct so the correct current debt level 14577 30 percent of that the tax benefit is 4373 million we see probability of default at current debt levels at current debt levels their rating works out to be double a so the probability of default is 0.51 percent correct now we have made an assumption and the assumption is that we assume the cost of bankruptcy is 25 percent of the current firm value what is the firm value 117029 we are saying if the firm goes bankrupt 25 percent of value is lost and the chances of the firm going bankrupt are 0.5 so that's the probability that's the bankruptcy cost that's the firm value right so effectively we multiply the three and we find that this 149 is what is the expected cost of bankruptcy now we reverse the equation and use this equation market value minus tax benefits plus bankruptcy cost so that gives you the market value minus tax benefits plus bankruptcy costs and this equation 
will give us what is going to be our unlevered value of the firm. Now we need to start calculating the tax benefits and the probability of bankruptcy at every level, right? So let's go to our Excel file and try and use our Excel file and arrive at these values as we go along. So that's what we have calculated. If you see the current enterprise value is put here. The tax benefits are here and we can find the expected cost of default. Remember, given their current debt equity structure, this is the debt and this is the market value of equity. We can divide the debt by the equity and we find 0.13 is the structure. If I want to calculate the debt to capital ratio, right? That's what we have calculated here in this table. Where are we in terms of debt to capital? That's equal to my debt divided by debt plus equity. And that's around 0.12, which is close to this number here. So I'm going to assume that they are at a double A rating. And based on this double A rating, we are going to put the expected cost of default as 0.51% into 25%. That's what we have taken into the current firm value, which is 117029. And we freeze that. Correct? What is the total debt at this point? That tax benefit of debt is available, which is calculated in this cell. So that's the tax benefit of debt which is available 4373. Can we find the unlevered firm value? We take the levered firm value. We remove the tax benefit and we add the expected cost of default or bankruptcy benefits. Now remember unlevered firm value is going to remain the same because we are going to assume that this is the value that stays regardless of what the uh, you know scenario is because we are assuming that debt levels are zero in this case correct once we have this we can now calculate what is the expected cost of default that's going to be a multiplication of the probability 25 percent of the current value and multiply that with the probability. I can drag this down as well. So that's my total value. Total debt. If I look at what the firm value is, total debt is nothing but 0.1 into the current enterprise value that we are looking at. Correct. So that gives us the total debt numbers and I can freeze the enterprise value for the time being. So that's the firm value which we have frozen and Based on that, these are the debt values. What is the tax benefit in each of these situations? That's this into 30%. So that's the tax benefit we are looking at. Total debt into tax benefit of 30% and the expected cost of default. Correct? Now, to find out what is the levered firm value, we will take the unlevered firm value and to that we will add the tax benefit and we will subtract the expected cost of default to arrive at the levered firm value at each debt to capital ratio. So we take the unlevered value, we add the benefit because of tax and we subtract the cost of default, right? And then we kind of drag it down and now we realize that the maximization in this particular case does not occur at a 0.3 debt equity or a 0.2 debt equity, but the maximization now in this particular case occurs at a 0.4 debt to capital ratio. When we say 0.4 debt to capital, we are saying that out of the total capital of 100, the debt is 40 which means equity is 60, which means debt equity ratio is 40 by 60. That's 0 0.66, 2 by 3 is what is the debt equity ratio we are looking at. This is, remember, higher than what we have seen earlier. And that's because this method is going to try and maximize the benefits that are coming on account of taxation effects because of 
taking debt on the books of the company. This for us is what is the adjusted present value approach. So I'll repeat what we did. We found the enterprise value, the current enterprise value. We found the market capitalization, added the debt value, subtracted the current cash value. The market capitalization is available on websites. Debt and cash values we picked up from the annual report of the company. Cash is a summation of two values. This is nothing but cash and bank balances, cash plus current investments. So we have taken these two and that value comes. Then we calculate the enterprise value, which is equity plus debt minus cash. This value, then we find out what is the current benefit because of taxes. That's 4373. The current debt to capital ratio is 0 0.12, which is closest to this row. So we assume that the company is here, assume this default probability, arrive at what is the expected cost of default. Expected cost of default is this probability multiplied by the loss value. We're assuming that if a company ends up defaulting, the total cost is going to be 25% of the firm value. And we multiply all these to find these values. From this value, knowing that we already have the current firm value, enterprise value, we subtract the benefits of debt and we add the expected cost of default to arrive at the unlevered firm value. If the company had not taken any debt, this would have been their value. Once we add uh, that scenario, it comes to all unlevered value will always remain the same. Then we calculate at each debt to capital ratio what is going to be the debt assuming the current enterprise value. We find out what is the tax benefit of the debt. We find out what is the expected cost of default. Unlevered firm value plus tax benefit due to the debt minus expected cost of default is going to give me the levered firm value. The maximum levered firm value comes at a debt to capital ratio of 0 0.4, a debt to capital ratio of 0 0.4, a debt to capital ratio of 0 0.4 is effectively going to mean that debt upon debt plus equity is 0 0.4, or I'm basically saying debt is 40 and debt plus equity is 100, which means equity is 60. So debt by equity ratio is 40 by 60, which is equal to 2 by 3 or 66%, correct? This is the value at which the levered firm value gets maximized under adjusted present value approach. This is the debt equity ratio that we should have. Now that's another approach that we have. There's no hard and fast rule that we have to use this approach or that approach, but that's just one more way of arriving at the adjusted present value, right? Then the final approach that we have is we could look at the sector approach where we do a relative analysis. Here, we believe that the best place for the firm is the optimal debt equity ratio where the sector average is met. It is to reach the point where the sector is averaging, right? Looking at the peers, we have peers such as MRF tires and CA tires. We can find out what is the market cap and I'm going to use the market value of equity and market value of debt. Market value of debt being the same as book value. We've calculated this from their balance sheet and this from the internet. So we can find this on the NSE website or money control website. So we calculated the market cap and we found the debt equity ratio for both of these. And then we took the sector average, which is 14.2% or 0.14. That's the sector average debt equity. Ideally, the company currently in terms of debt equity on a market basis is uh, close to this average, but they should maintain this in order to be at the optimal level. That's basically what the sector approach is. We can extend this to even use global players. Uh, ideally, local players give a good sense because that, uh, that incorporates any kind of tax benefits that are locally available in terms of India. If we go outside, we don't know what tax rates are and tax rates would be an important ingredient in terms of what kind of benefit you get out of having debt, right? So that becomes an important parameter when you're looking at a firm 
and uh, you're looking at uh, calculating what kind of optimal debt equity ratio should be a firm having so that's our sector approach it's a relatively simple approach it just says that the maximum safety is to be at the sector average because it is assumed that if all the firms are arriving at a certain average then maybe in their collective wisdom this is the best point to be this is the best place to be right and so we say that the firm should also be at that debt equity ratio right so that brings us to an end to all the major approaches of uh, calculating the cost of capital there are a couple of points left now in this particular unit which will cover first a validation of the fact that we can use this approach and enhance company value or enhance shareholder value if we take the debt and then a discussion on what are the key pointers that impact this overall analysis this overall capital structure for a firm right so before we end a couple of questions how do we arrive at the current unlevered value of the firm if debt of two firms in the sector is 480 crore and 700 crore and market capitalizations are 5700 crore then what would be the optimal capital structure based on average sector debt to equity ratio right so that's what we have to solve that's it in this particular video thank you